24,000 miles, 240 generator hours, about 35 feet, couple slides, partridge in a pear tree, and oh yeah, impeccably well kept Winnebago Vista coming in here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is clean. The only reason it's here, previous owners just weren't using it and they said, you know what? We spent all this time and effort maintaining it because it was always actively maintained. They didn't let it just sit and rot, but we never use it. So what's the point? So you folks are gonna luck out. This, this is sharp. Now, I really like how this one travels with this slide closed right here. So this extra long slide out with this extra long, very home-like sort of wraparound couch right here. Very cool, and it gives you some awesome little entertainment vibes on the road, and obviously full kitchen access. Now this is a, uh, a full rear private bathroom, so for traveling you're going to have your little uh, you know, uh, travel bath or guest bathroom here when you reach your destination. It's kind of nice, because chances are you don't want people going through your master bedroom to get to the bathroom, and obviously easy travel access to the bed back here for those longer trips where you need a break. Now it shines and gleams from the floor up, and I am a sucker for these almost like sectional style, if you will, sofas that they have, uh, these L-shaped sofas that they have in these, because I'm a big long guy, and a lot of RV furniture does not fit me well. So for me, this is what I call the perfect napping couch. I'm gonna throw a pillow or two in that corner, I'm gonna shove my head in that corner, I'm gonna lay my long body down this way, staring at the TV, and on a rainy day, I'm going to take a couple little naps and snoozes um, between working on items on my honeydew list. You know, it's like I tell my wife, y you don't have to, to, you know, keep nagging me to do stuff. I know you told me six months ago. I'm getting to it, but I digress. Moving on. So this extra bonus seat right here, this is actually telescopic. It slides open, and all the cushions and stuff are self-storing, which is kind of neat. So when you're in transit, that recesses and hides away so the slide can come in without cutting the camper in half and crushing anything. But that's what I like about this. It's got a good travel mode and maybe an even better destination mode. We'll come back to the living room, actually. We've got a very nice vaulted ceiling over here, and that open-feeling vaulted ceiling gives it, well... <laughs> An open feeling. Um, we've also got a noise canceling soft touch ceiling liner and on a used RV this is doing a couple things for us. In any RV it's cutting down a lot of the noise so that when you're at your destination or in transit it is very quiet and calm and comfortable and relaxing in here. That's part of the recreational vehicle thing is a little bit of R&R &R, you know. So the other thing it does is God forbid this thing ever did have a leak which it hasn't none that I've detected and I've looked through it in depth a couple times now it would be stained and you'd be able to tell that there was a problem there, and there's none. There's no uh, issue with it whatsoever. We do have dual air conditioners, so this thing will cool very nicely. We'll come back to the kitchen. When you see the ceiling fans, you're going to find the bigger max air vent fans with roof vent covers. So this thing will get some excellent airflow, whether you're running the AC or just uh, opening up the windows. Um, the uh, front cab area here, like most Class A motorhomes, the seats will spin around to kind of face the living arrangement if you want to. Now they can fully spin around. I just I did a quick demo setup here just to show you folks. And for privacy, you have a a, a pair, a half and half um, track around curtain, if you will, a little curtain track to privatize that off or you can fully bring it around this way to, to uh, open everything right back up. And as you'll see when we go outside, this has a huge front windshield for awesome lights and visibility. Now, uh, down here we've got our you know uh, backup observation camera system, automatic uh, leveling system, uh, our you know DVD, stereo, all-in-one kind of touchscreen unit down there doing all kinds of good, happy stuff for us. You can see that the seats are not worn out where someone kind of you know, had something sharp in their pocket and kind of rubbed a hole in the, the seating a little bit. Everything on this is clean. It is sharp. It is good, good looking. Now, as we spin around here, something I want to kind of point out, we're going to start out with the full drawers under the dining table. That will open right up for some easy storage so you don't have to lift up that table. And you can see how there's full storage above the super slide and all the way down there you might spy a couple little uh, overhead vent pillows. If it's really, really hot or cold, those things are very nice for keeping the hot or cold air, whatever you want, in your camper. Um, one other thing I want to show you is this interesting little pile of documents right here. Now if this does not speak to the quality of ownership this RV has enjoyed 
it, during its lifetime. I don't know what does. Anytime that we sell an RV for someone on consignment, one of the questions I ask is, tell me about your RV and tell me the questions that you would want answered if you were going to buy it. I want to know, you know, what was it really that made the folks gravitate toward this RV? He said, the first thing I would want to know is how it works because we never had one of these before. So he went through after he learned the RV very well and he created his own little uh, instruction pamphlets here showing, you know, reminding him or showing the next owner how everything on this works. And he put these in these nice handy little sleeves right here and said, you know what, I, I think the ne next person that buys these, they'll really appreciate this information because this is stuff that, um, you know, when I bought the RV, the folks were pretty good about telling me how it worked, but there was a lot I had to learn as we went. Now this right here will show you, uh, you know, everything that was on this RV when it was uh, first purchased and made. So you'll have a copy of this, including all the holding tanks and everything. And we're going to have this information available for you as well, of course. But something that I thought was really awesome and interesting is this right here. And this would be a good time as I scroll past this document. If you see something interesting, I would pause the video to, to re read and review it. So these are all of the things that the previous owner did when they did them, how much they cost. If that is not uh, some of the most amazing um, record keeping of active care and maintenance, ladies and gentlemen, then I'm just really not sure what is. That I know that that made me feel good about adding it to our listings out here. I I looked at that and I said, dude, if I was going to buy this, I would, I would really appreciate seeing stuff like this. And back to the t main task at hand here, showing you the camper. This has uh, a uh, what's kind of called a dream dinette system here instead of pedestals. It has a gas strut uh, on here to make lifting and lowering that table into and out of sleeping positions simple and easy. And you might notice as we go through, all the windows have two section day and night roller shades. So you the windows are heavily tinted, so folks are already not seeing inside. But what this gives us, guys, is uh, more privacy or... Uh, you can really just hard block out the sun when you need to. Now, uh, the kitchen over here, like I said, it's very good for traveling. But when you reach your destination, it also offers a lot of storage capacity. And from there, as we come over, the kitchen just kind of, you know, hands off very smoothly and seamlessly to the entertainment center. We've got our big gas electric traveling fridge over here. <laughs> I just spotted something. Uh, they, they found a, they must have been wine enthusiasts because I've noticed a few things, uh, you know, very it, classy, not like trashy looking or anything, but a couple wine related items laying around and they put a bubble level on this. And I suppose when you reach the point where you've imbibed enough spirits where the bubble level is no longer reading level or you feel like the camper's crooked, but it's still reading level, that's probably the time you should quit drinking. <laughs> so with this big wraparound couch right here, it gives us one of the best, easiest entertainment centers that this RV could have. And that's what's kind of cool about this. This is sort of the size of a big Class C. And it, I don't know, it has a, a little bit of a feel of a really jazzy Class C. But it's got a lot of really intelligent, really smart, nice Class A features like this right here. And that electric space heating fireplace down there. And I love the fact, by the way, that it even has... The little mesh metal grate on it as though like you were afraid that little sparks were going to pop out of a piece of wood and jump into the linoleum here. That is just a very nice homey feeling touch. So right here again, we have the traveling or guest half bathroom. And that's what's kind of neat about this. Whether you are zipping down the road or you have some friends over and maybe you're enjoying a glass of wine like it seems the previous owners did. Or maybe, I don't know, anything. Maybe you're you're just, you know... You don't want your friends walking through your bedroom to reach your master bathroom. Well, here they don't have to. And frankly, even just for daytime use, it's not like they're getting a second-class citizen bathroom. This is nice. Now, we do have sliding privacy doors both here as well as to the rear bathroom to uh, enclose and privatize the bedroom here. Um, that's kind of another nice thing, is if you have a guest sleeping over, and the, the sofa I forgot to mention earlier does open into a hide bed as well, you can open this, or you can leave this closed right here so guests can come and go to the bathroom at night without, like, staring at you while you're sleeping because, you know, that's creepy. Now, over here in the bedroom, a couple things that they did that I really like. We have very large side stands, 
and they have power outlets built right into the slide boxes for my CPAP users and phone chargers. The uh, original bedding on this has been replaced with something more residential in grade, but a lot of times when you're looking at a used RV, people plan to replace the bedding anyway. But both sides of the bed, your, your side stands, are also personal little storage chests, if you will. So personal little items, valuable items. You have a nice out of sight, out of mind position for those things. And as we come over here, I actually had to get out and look at the RV uh, because they executed this so well that with all of this storage here, I was really sure, I'm like, they have to have a slide out, like opposing slide outs in this bedroom. So I started opening up all the storage and I realized very quickly, they do not. This has just been extremely well executed with an incredible amount of long-term storage here. Um, between those, uh, I don't know, call it like a his and hers, if you will, overhead cabinet. You can see you got your bedroom TV facing you here. And that's another thing I like. The previous owner, anything that they had in this RV, they left it in this RV. Everything had a place, a position, um, a purpose. The uh, taller and vaulted ceilings plus that skylight makes us very tall person friendly here in the shower. And you might notice they have these little um, deodorizer items in each of the sinks. And below each of those, they even put a, a little towel so that they wouldn't jiggle around and maybe like cause a little scuffed up spot in the sink. They were incredibly detail oriented about their RVs here. Now, um, the uh, both the guest bathroom and this one, they have a little bit of a higher rise toilet to give you uh, easier access here. And above the, uh, again, in the bathroom here, all your vent fans are going to be these nicer, bigger Max Air vent fans. But another thing that you'll notice is as we open everything up, you have a tremendous amount of great bathroom space in here. And it, it, this is such a good floor plan for if you're going to do some traveling, but you do wanna do some long-term stays as well. It's a very good model for kind of converting between a traveler and a destination use seemingly seamlessly. Now, just like the uh, interior, you couldn't really hope for the exterior to be better maintained than it has been. Um, Super high gloss skin, just gleaming in the sunshine. Well, not even in the sunshine, even on the shady side, it still has like a mirror-like reflectivity. They put pretty much the biggest windshield they really could on this thing, and they have some really thin corner beams right here. So when that little like Geo Metro is parked next to you, you have the visibility that you can see them while you're driving, but when you reach your destination, you're also going to enjoy more views of your campsite. Um, we are on a uh, Ford uh, chassis here with a Triton V10 gas engine, in case you're curious. Uh, that should mean that this has about a 5,000 pound uh, tow capacity. These are Goodyear tires that are looking fantastic. There is a lot of rubber left on these sneakers and there's no sign of you know dry, rotting, weathering, anything like that. Heavy duty slide system on this too, holy cow. Um, there's a good look at just the, the gleamy shininess and how there's no weathering on the decals on the exterior of this thing here. Oh, hold on. I'm going too fast. Let me look at, let's take a look at the, uh, the storage underneath the slides. Now, in case you're not familiar, if you remember the, the 1980s hit, um, that is a flux capacitor, which is the uh, component of electrical engineering that makes time travel possible. Though I do believe that this one has kind of been retrofitted to be something like a uh, old house sort of brain and, and fuse box and circuit board. But uh, I think that that began its life as a flux capacitor. Now this is what's kind of cool about this one. Because it is on a bigger chassis, it does have a shelved pass-through storage here in the basement area. And that's something that not all Class A motorhomes have in this size and category. You do have to go to a bigger, heavier chassis to do that. But kind of like a diesel pusher, you now gain the extra space for like chairs and picnic tables and just anything flat, thin totes for like sewer stuff. Um, the, uh, uh, let me take a step over here. You'll see that this one's not a full pass-through, but it is another one of those big shelf spaces. And if you're not really familiar with motorhomes, you're like, well, why is that big hump right there? Why didn't they just drop that down? That's one of the differences between something with a front engine in a gas motorhome like this and a rear engine diesel pusher. When you don't have a drivetrain going all the way through it, as is the case in a diesel pusher, then you don't need that hump. But in this case, obviously you do, because if you got rid of the hump, you'd also get rid of the drivetrain, and then you're going nowhere fast. <laughs> 
Uh, the slide awnings on your slides are looking good. They've obviously been maintained. Uh, uh, we're going to crawl up on the roof at the end of this here, but they maybe need a little bit of a dust off. And look at the freaking detail work from Winnebago on this. So it's nice that we have a ladder, but right where you would put your foot where your toes might actually touch this nice painted bumper and you don't want it scuffed up, they put a little, um, you know, traction plate right there so that your shoes don't scuff that paint up right there. Just, that's just crazy supreme execution on, on behalf of Winnebago's part. And again, the way everything looks good, that's the previous owners doing a job for you there. Your windows have their own little uh, window awning so that on a rainy day, you can leave those windows open for some excellent, excellent airflow. Um, I've been around it two or three times now, guys, doing my pictures and videos and everything. Like, here's our, our wheel covers, which is one of the reasons that those wheels are not all dry rotted out. I can't find anything that I dislike. I even like this. Like, there's a, a lot of people ask questions like, okay, if you go camping, do you get stickers and do you put them on your RV? And I see both sides of this scenario. There are some people say, heck yeah, I'm going to put them right on the skin of that RV because this is my RV and I'm proud of it. And then there's a bunch of other people that will say, well, I don't want to, I don't want it to look like, you know, some, um, some teenagers, you know, little Hyundai accent car with stickers all over the bumper from a punk rock band. And I think that this is such a good solution. You put your stickers on the inside of a baggage door right here, and it's very much, it makes it, you feel like it's your own, you have adventures, you can see that this RV has history, but it also doesn't look kind of sketchy, you know, something like that. Anyway. Double power entry step for easy coming and going and a bigger handle kind of round out the package. And these are your side view cameras. A lot of RVs will have your turn signal or side view cameras actually in the mirrors right here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I do prefer them down this way if I have a choice. I don't think it's a deal breaker. But the reason I say that is because it gives you a clearer line of sight um, at the car level which is one of the things you're looking for is to make sure that there's not a car there if you're trying to turn around on the highway or well not turn around but you get the idea i think we're good top upstairs one of the things i like about these minis is the just zero flex super solid one piece laminated roof membrane that they have here it feels so sturdy and stable up here it gives you such confidence walking around this thing um like a lot of these towable RV roofs, there's nothing wrong with them. Some of them are rated for a huge amount of weight. Like that Jayco's rated for like 4,800 pounds. But when you walk on it, the plywood decking does kind of moonwalk a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that, but you feel none of that up here. It feels so good under you. Now, um, really, it's been very clean, uh, well-maintained historically. Uh, most recently, they just weren't using it. So unfortunately, it has collected a little storage dust. But you can eat, like if I get right up close here, you don't see any sort of like, I, it looks like dre desert floor dry cracking of like old mud puddles where the, the membrane had like kind of been roughed up or deteriorated from the weather. This has been very well kept. You can see we got the roof vent covers on all the vents here, uh, including the one over the master bathroom in the back. The sealant is incredibly heavy handed and still super valid and viable. It has such a good pliability to it. It's not even funny. So that tells me this has been extremely protected from UV exposure. This is what you want to see on the roof of a used RV guys. The front termination strip looks good. Slide awnings, the roof themselves could use a dust, but that's it. This thing is great. So give us a call, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, uh, you know, Package deals, RV delivery, and everything between. We only do it all here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.